for the purebreds, which for the record is the team name and it's not something offensive that I'm saying. Welcome to the grand finale of the Bower Battle Breakdown, where we learn and grow together. Going into game three against Krebs, it was very important to me to set up and support Palkia as much as humanly possible. It has a great matchup into both of his restricteds, and the only thing that I was really afraid of was a leading Amoongus. So instead of doing a swap into Tapu Koko, I decided to go ahead and lead with Tapu Koko to reduce the options that Amoongus has. I Dynamax Palkia right away. Kyogre does not Dynamax. My attempted double into Kyogre turns into a double into Amoongus, which is going to KO it. Now, in retrospect, I don't know if I needed to use Dynamax on this first turn, but that's something that I'm going to talk about later. For now, I get the KO on Amoongus right away, and it doesn't get to do anything. Water Spout is going to bring Tap Coco down to Sash, of course, and Krebs is going to send out his Mimikyu. Now, at this point, it is important to me to start padding my special defense. That's usually my strategy for playing Palkia against Kyogre, is if I can get enough max Quake boosts, I don't really have to worry about what Kyogre is going to do. Krebs is going to Dynamax at this point, and I'm going to use max Quake in order to get that special defense boost that I was just talking about. I figure that I'll protect with Tapu Koko just in case this exact thing happens. The Shadow Sneak does get blocked, so Tapu Koko will survive. Max Quake breaks the disguise, but that's not the, that's not the important part. I, again, I want those special defense boosts as much as humanly possible. Kyogre going for the Max Hail Storm. Originally, I was disappointed thinking, oh, it's going to chip out Tapu Koko, but it was going straight for Tapu Koko in the first place. So the Protect didn't really help. At this point, I've traded away my Tapu Koko for Krebs Amoongus, and at this point, I'm going to continue that plan of padding my special defense as much as possible and ignoring Kyogre to death. I figure I will double the Mimikyu, do Glacial Lance with Calyrex, and see if I can pick up that KO. Palkia continues to be the fastest, so this Max Quake is going to hit first. Kyogre's Max Hailstorm, thankfully not going to do a whole lot of damage. Unfortunately, Mimikyu is going to Will-O-Wisp, which I didn't think he was going to do. <laughs> Perhaps I could have protected Calyrex this turn, but it is going to get the KO on Mimikyu anyway, so it's, it's an option. I don't know if it's one that I necessarily should have taken. Hill damage, burn damage, and then Krebs is going to bring in his own Calyrex. Now, Palkia's Dynamax is going to end here, and this turn is very, very telling. I mentioned how I Dynamaxed a turn early at the beginning, and now staring down two Pokemon for which I would have much rather had my Dynamax, I'm wondering if I did it early. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't say that this Spatial Rend miss sucks. Calyrex gets hit by Max Geyser, but thankfully I have some boosts, so I am going to be able to weather that in time to get a little bit of extra damage onto this Kyogre, right before Krebs turns the speed tiers on their heads. The Pokemon count now is 3-2, to two, but my Calyrex is looking extremely rough. My Incineroar in the back, I feel, is my only hope, so I need to get rid of this Kyogre. I protect my own Calyrex. Unfortunately, Krebs Kyogre also protects. Palkia won't be able to get off another attack because unfortunately this Glacial Lance is going to finish it off. I ultimately was too scared to try and switch in Incineroar, but I think an Incineroar switch in there would have won the game. And here comes Incineroar. Kyogre is just protected, so I will be able to fake out my choice of Pokemon. I'll get this Intimidate going. Calyrex is still, unfortunately, not going to be able to do a whole ton of damage, but I am going to be able to pin down this Kyogre at least for another turn, and hopefully my Incineroar will be able to stick around long enough to do some more damage. Take out does a good amount. That always surprises me for some reason. Now, Glacial Lance is coming in from this Calyrex, but my own Calyrex is actually going to survive just barely, so I will get the chance to get a high horsepower into Kyogre, Unfortunately, this narrowly misses the KO. Then my Calyrex succumbs to burn damage, and I spend 
a little bit of time figuring out how Incineroar is going to spend what is likely his last turn. Unfortunately, uh, Calyrex, sorry, is going to high horsepower and Incineroar's attack isn't going to matter. Unfortunately, I lost this game and therefore the set. Very good games to Krebs. I want to talk about two particular things about this game three in the series. The first one goes back to my very first turn. My strategy was to lead Palkia and Tapu Koko because Palkia is my major threat to his team and Tapu Koko is assuming the role of shutting down Amoongus' options, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. But I spent the first turn Dynamaxing my Palkia when I intended to max Wormwind the, well, the Kyogre, but I kind of figured it was going to end up heading towards Amoongus anyway. In that case, the attack drop is not that significant, and the extra Wormwind damage is also not that significant. It may have been better to simply try and Spatial Rend instead of using that turn on Max Wormwind, especially when you look later in the game and see the turn right after Palkia's Dynamax ends, and Krebs still has an additional turn of Dynamax for his Kyogre, and saving a Max Wormwind for that turn, or perhaps another Quake, would have been far more useful than the first Dynamax turn that I actually did spend. Second thing that I want to cover happened at the end of the game. In the second or third to last turn, I remember, I don't want to lose Kyogre for free, but I actually meant Incineroar. I was just tripping all over my words. I was too scared to swap it in because I didn't want it to eat a water move from Kyogre and die for nothing. The problem is, when Kyogre is looking at a very injured Calyrex and a Palkia, it doesn't really have a lot of motivation to do a big water move, especially under Trick Room. I should have seen the Protect coming. Kyogre will protect himself. Calyrex can take care of everything else. And then Kyogre can come in later. I think if I had my wits about me a little more to close out the game, I could have recognized that that was actually a pretty safe turn to switch in the Incineroar. Kyogre would have protected. Incineroar would have definitely survived the Glacial Lance. And then I can fake out. Calyrex can do something. And I still have Palkia in the back ready to go for later. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the Bauer Battle Breakdown. I hope you've been enjoying the series. I hope you've been getting a lot out of it. This is actually going to be my last one for a while. I really enjoy doing this analytical content, but I'm going to take a break from it and continue shortly after the release of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. In the meantime, I'm going to post my, social, my socials here. Sorry, if you would like to keep up with me on those various channels. In the meanwhile, this YouTube channel will not be empty by any means. I'm currently participating in a couple of different leagues, and so I'll be posting a lot of those matches here on my channel. In fact, you'll start seeing probably more than one video a week from me as I'm doing a lot of different things at once. I'm in the Malamar League, where we have a wacky format every week. I'm in the Little Root Lessons Draft League, where I'm playing on behalf of a team. I'm also playing in a showdown league called Redeem the Trash, where we're not allowed to use any Pokemon that's remotely good ever. I'll still be around, but I won't be continuing the analytical content until Scarlet and Violet come out. That's my time. I'll see you soon.